Today I'm reviewing 007 The Duel for the Sega Genesis. It was developed by Domark, who did quite a few 007 titles. The Duel, their final Bond game, was published in 1993 for the Genesis, Master System, and Game Gear. So here's the premise. An insane criminal mastermind named Professor Gravemar has seized control of a top-secret satellite launch center on an unnamed Caribbean island. His plan is to send weapon satellites into orbit and take over the world. While he readies the satellites to launch, he's posted armed guards all over the island, and he's taken a bunch of blonde women hostage to use as human shields. And as further insurance, he's deployed four henchmen, all of whom just happen to be enemies from James Bond's past. But how is that possible? Didn't Oddjob and Mayday get killed? Didn't Jaws switch sides? It's conceivable how Baron Somdi might still be in the picture, but what about the rest of them? What the hell is going on? Well, it turns out these henchmen are clones. Yeah, dude has a cloner. Apparently it's one of those high-end models that spits out adult clones, like in Multiplicity. I guess that means that Gravemar also had DNA samples from all these baddies. Who knows where he got those? Anyway, all that stands between Gravemar and world domination is 007. This is a platforming game with run-and-gun elements. Most of the bad guys you encounter are your typical goons, faceless, endlessly spawning drudges who go down with a single bullet. Some are stuck patrolling tiny ledges and can be easily dispatched from above or below. Others spawn off-screen, then appear without warning, leaving you only a split second to blast them before they open fire. Consequently, you'll expend a lot of ammo shooting down empty corridors, just in case. In addition to these chumps, each level also contains at least one mini-boss, a crazy vehicle or robot or one of the aforementioned henchman clones. To help you on your missions, Q has dropped supply suitcases around the island. These packages give you health, grenades, and ammunition. It's also important to collect ammo from fallen enemies since you have to waste so many bullets shooting off screen. Fortunately, enemies drop clips whenever you're running low. Just make sure you're quick about picking them up, because they explode if they're not collected within a few seconds. I'm guessing those aren't standard issue NATO rounds. The missions all share the same basic parameters. You have to rescue the hostages, dispatching any enemies you encounter along the way. Then you find the bomb hidden in the stage, arm it, and get the hell out of there before the place blows sky high. Typically when you die, you get to keep all of your progress to that point so any items you've found remain in your inventory, and any hostages you've saved stay saved. But if the bomb detonates before you escape, you'll not only lose a life, but all of your progress on that mission. You'll have to start that level over from scratch. Knowing this makes some of the escape sequences pretty hair-raising. You get five lives and one continue, and then it's game over. That may sound a bit stingy, but this is not a long game. It only has four levels and then a final boss fight. Beat that and you've won. The visuals are solid. Bond looks good in his trademark tux and he's pretty well animated. And the backgrounds are cool, with well-drawn tile sets that give each level its own look. I could complain about the bland design of the goons and hostages, or that some of the cloned henchmen, while recognizable, move a bit stiffly. But that's nitpicking. On the whole, the graphics are nice, especially for a licensed game. The music is punchy and engaging, and it's pure Sega Genesis. I like the sound effects too, especially the retort of your Volter PPK. I also enjoy the digitized voices, though for a different reason. Like most digitized samples on the Genesis, they're rough and dirty and really kinda crappy. And I wouldn't have it any other way. The controls, unfortunately, are a bit off. It's hard to explain, but they're a tiny bit sluggish and yet also a little twitchy and overly sensitive. Sometimes they don't respond as readily as they should, and other times they respond too much. You notice this especially when you have to jump onto a small ledge or inch up to the very edge of a platform. The gunplay also has its problems. 
Firing straight shots is simple enough, but the game also lets you shoot along diagonals, and the way that's implemented is a little clunky. You have to hold up or down on the D-pad, but the down button also lets you duck. The result? Sometimes you duck when you're trying to shoot down. One other feature of the combat is a cover system that lets you sidestep into alcoves to dodge bullets. It reminds me of Blackthorn, which utilizes a similar mechanic. But in Blackthorn, you can shrink back into the shadows almost anywhere, whereas in the duel, you can only duck into certain niches. And in Blackthorn, ducking into cover is a useful and essential part of the game. In the duel, it's more of a gimmick. For one thing, it's rare to come across one of these recesses when you actually need it. And this is one of those cases where the animators did their job too well. They created a nice fluid motion, and it looks damn cool. But all of those extra frames make it take too long to be responsive. It's a shame, too, because handled well, this could have added something to the gameplay. Most of the levels are big and sprawling and require some memorization, which I didn't mind. If you enjoy games like Metroid and Prince of Persia, where you do a lot of exploring, this catches a bit of that same vibe. One annoyance, though, is that on some levels, you spend an ungodly amount of time just waiting for elevators. I usually kept busy by working on my dance moves. In terms of difficulty, the game offers a moderate challenge. There's a fair amount of trial and error involved in exploring each level. You'll die a number of times learning the ins and outs of a mission, but that's part of the fun. And once you've memorized a level, it's pretty satisfying, breezing right on through it like a pro. Besides the default difficulty, there are two harder settings. But be warned, these higher settings don't seem to add anything to the gameplay itself. As far as I could tell, they just decrease the damage you can take before dying. I do have one serious criticism concerning the difficulty, though. It's the henchman clones. All of them are... Oh, how do I say this? Stupid as hell! Going back to the multiplicity comparison, these idiots must be clones of clones of clones. Here's a pro tip on how to beat almost all of them. You ready? Just stand at a safe distance and shoot them. Yep, that's it. No dodging or pattern memorization required. Jaws will maul you if you get near him. But if you stand halfway up this staircase, he won't come down after you. He'll just happily walk into your shots until he dies. Baron Samdi stands rooted in one spot and throws machetes at you. Too bad for him, bullets go farther than machetes. I guess he just figures, ah, the hell with it. I'll just resurrect again anyway. If you confront Mayday head-on, she'll kick your scrawny secret agent ass all over the place. But she's just fine with you shooting her in the ankles. Odd Job and the final boss, which happens to be Jaws again, are a little more challenging, but only a little. None of the henchmen will give you any serious trouble, and that's a shame. Because as much as I've mocked the whole cloning thing, I do think it's a sweet idea to have a bunch of iconic henchmen together in one game. In my opinion, it's the villains and henchmen who are the real stars of the James Bond stories. Battling them should have been a test of your wits and skill, maybe involving some environmental puzzles. But you just shoot them, like all the other goons in the game. It's pretty anticlimactic. And while we're on the topic of things anticlimactic, I might as well mention the ending. I'm not going to show it on the off chance that anyone watching this decides to play the game themselves. I'll just say this. If you're expecting a satisfying resolution to the story, well, you might want to lower your expectations. I realize that as I've reviewed this, I've dwelt largely on the negative. The duel has a lot of flaws. But when I step back from those and consider the game as a whole, my overall impression is more positive. For all its faults, there are a lot of things it gets right. There's a definite sense of exploration as you make your way through the levels. It's satisfying blowing away the goons. The fights with the cloned henchmen are good for an ironic chuckle, if nothing else. The segments after you've armed the bomb and you're racing against the clock are genuinely exciting. And when you make your escape and then see the level you completed blowing up on the mission screen, you feel, just a little, like a badass secret agent. I don't think the game is worth the $50 it would have cost back in the day, especially considering how short it is. 
If I'd gotten this as a kid, I would have been disappointed at its length, but I also would have played the hell out of it. As it stands now, the five bucks I paid for an old copy feels fair. It's not a terrible way to spend a few evenings. I'm giving it one thumb up out of five.